Hey all, Diplomat here again, coming to you from the USA. Still is January 19th, I put out a few videos today. Um, uh, hopefully to give you guys uh, some good initial content uh, to look at as we go through this discovery, which uh, might take a few videos, um, but that's what we're going to do. So last we left off, we, uh, we had just uh, reviewed... Uh, some of the write-up with the discussions of the between the officers and some of Shanann's friends. Um, so uh, please ensure you go back and uh, read, uh, look at the previous video if you've not seen it before. Uh, but now we're up to page uh, 16 in Adobe. This is Discovery page 61. And this is um, from Officer James. These are handwritten notes. A lot of this is related to what's above, but it's pretty interesting going through their handwritten notes. You get a little um, view into the officer, how they interpreted the feedback, how they noted it down, um, and how that turns uh, ultimately into their reports. So um, let's go. Now, first of all, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is, or if it's relevant. Um, but uh, maybe a little doodling up here. But. Um, Anyway, let's go into, this is a Sandy Utah comment about the Facebook, Shanann Watts. This was the uh, false, um, you know, information, not false information, but this was somebody out in Utah that saw two girls that looked like twins with a guy under the tree, the aquatic center, the girls were crying the whole time, and the guy turned away, um, uh, but it looked like the girls at Dimple Dell. Uh, that obviously was not them. This is some notes about Chris Watts and the friends that he uh, gave their names of, uh, Shanann's friends. So Sam talked July 18th via text with Shanann. Uh, routine, nothing off. Chris, didn't want baby, wants separation. Saturday night baseball game, buddies, salmon and beer, $60 something, uh, seems like a lot. Westminster, Rusty Bucket. Uh, eat something, uh, gift home, I don't know what that means, got home, uh, two hours later, Rocky's game, pregnant, nausea, so it's interesting how they take these notes down, right, and turn it into their uh, reports, pretty impressive that they can take uh, these kinds of notes and then uh, get all that into a written statement, uh, but they're professionals, so here we got Erie, Jeremy, scheduled uh, life, scheduled life, rain machine goes. I think that's the uh, machines in the kids' room that make uh, the sound of rain. Kids take medicine. Once every few months, Chris has uh, has house with the kids and talks to mom. I guess Chris talks to his mom a lot. Maybe that's what that is. Cindy. Uh, last night, Lavelle, Phoenix, 7 p.m., Nikki and Shanann from Addie from Nikki. Uh, that's where she was hearing her information. Thursday event, uh, Saturday, uh, Friday through Sunday. She saw her Friday through Sunday. Husband distant, not compatible anymore, blindside. Try go away for the weekend, deleted Facebook account. Proud of her with the kids, of her and kids. He wrote, having boy, 15 weeks, cancel gender reveal party. Uh, not sure what that says. Him seeing someone? He appeared more fit. He got more fit recently. Rocky's game, Sunday. Did not want baby, told daddy. Routine person, helicopter mom, passive man, calm person. Lupus, so distraught about Chris. Getting annoyed with her recently known her couple years early may april uh, that's uh, her knowing shenan at dinner and their names that they were at dinner that sunday night in arizona addy uh, christina cold to her oh this is now christina uh cold to her two months she had surgery helped with the kids loving and caring so when she came in from hawaii North Carolina, she started calling, um, not touch, kiss, and uh, talking. She 14 years friends, 
He didn't want babies, scared, just two girls, not compatible anymore, allow five weeks. I couldn't do it anymore, struggling a bit. Um, a boy, super excited, willing to go um, to therapy with her, Aspen, Friday with her. She was done if, I don't know if he meant to complete another sentence, finish that sentence, uh, but it's obviously incomplete. Maybe she was done if that didn't work, or Chris said no in the end to go into therapy. So they last spoke Friday uh, where she, when she was in Arizona. Uh, sex of baby, everybody spoke with her. Every day she spoke with her. She was in charge, loving, caring, lovey-dovey. Tired of not being able to hang uh, something on the wall. That was with regards to Chris saying that you know he couldn't even hang something on the wall. He wanted to say in things. Like my sister. That, I don't know. It, maybe that's like she became like her his sister. She felt like it was uh, her sis, his sister now. That's how turned off he was. I don't know. Just happened in North Carolina. Civil because of kids. Makes no sense. Put kids in Shenan first. Aggressive with kids around him. Did not touch her or ask about baby. Come back to... Um, her another man routine OCD everything in order um, every you, I don't know. Uh, this line I had trouble with oh even with what she was wearing um, you know I'm not sure this about unless asleep I can't make out these two words Never leaves without flip-flops. We know that was a big uh, key because they were by the front door. Protective of kids. Struggle sometimes financially. Wanted marriage to work. I can't fight with him or without him. Girls are light sleepers. Open garage. Early in morning. Chris went out front door. Something outside garage. She will not... She would not leave like that. Hard to imagine Chris hurt girls. He's attentive, active, caring. Kids and marriage problems started to something together to get worse. So he deleted Facebook page, plans everything, never leaves like that. So just random various notes about him and her kind of slept together. Here's Addie. Things not good between her and Chris. Um, every day concerned he was uh, having an affair. So they knew. She knew. Shannon knew, I think. You know, these girls are smart. They talk a lot. Um, you know, changes like this in a, in a husband uh, usually lots of times mean an affair. Sudden changes like that. He didn't want baby. Canceled gender reveal party. He was not wanting baby. Two weeks ago, text strength. Text messages. Him cheating Sunday night said look f looking looked sad. Him cheating. I apologize if that does not say cheating. Went to Rockies with group of guys out late. Um, babysitter Shanann communicated with babysitter. Um, went great food after had beer and salmon dinner bill sixty two dollars. He told her what he spent. He's been deleting every text with dad. That certainly has been something brought up and is very interesting. What was he needing to delete with his dad? Falling out uh, with his parents in North Carolina. Chris' mom exposed her to tree nut allergy. Didn't come to Cece's birthday. Dad is Chris and Shanann uh, felt dad. Shanann, Chris felt she had problems with dad I guess we know there were issues between Chris's family and Shanann especially her mom Chris deleted his Facebook last Thursday he seemed to come around when found out boy because he wanted a boy Chris is part of her social media for his for her business he needed a break from it friends with uh, them for about three years part of uh, uh, she's part of the company with her for Thrive 
Um, this I'm going to skip. They just aren't, they don't communicate well anymore. Chris wouldn't say what was uh, bothering him, what was wrong with the relationship. Anxious to get home, he was carrying around um, to her to Arizona. He was for him to her going. He was. I don't know what this says. Anxious to get home. She was anxious to get home. He was. I think he was supportive of her going to Arizona. I'm sorry, I don't know what that note says. Looking forward to this uh, weekend to get away. Nikki getting uh, was going to watch the kids. She believed she never would have left medicine, phone, car seats. Best mom she knows. Most organized, planning everything. He's always been a great dad. Only um, local local person that confided in was Nikki. Most of her friends through business. Um, friend Amanda director of school they had play dates Karen lives in Colorado but didn't discuss Chris in Arizona Chris told her um, house. oh that the neighbor had the security camera pointed at the house see again Chris giving <laughs> Chris being compliant hey by the way uh, just so you know there's a security camera my neighbor has it's pointed at my house I was just curious if you wanted to see that because I'm in it it's very interesting, seriously, when you think about that, um, was it just his compliance, you know, that was, uh, getting him into trouble? What did, what did he think this was going to, um, accomplish? I don't know. So next, uh, we get into page 21. That's Discovery, page 66. Okay, this is um, Officer Ed Goodman. So some of this could seem repetitive uh, when we get into the narrative, but it's the write-ups from the different officers. So it's each one's point of view, perspective, what they experienced. And so uh, it's definitely interesting in, in going through uh, each of them. So we have just references to Bella and Celeste here. On Monday, August 13th, at approximately 11 p.m., I was requested to assist in the search for a mother and her two juvenile daughters in the Wyndham Hill subdivision. The mother and daughters were identified to me as Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. It was explained to me that there had been no contact with Shanann or the daughters throughout the day, and that she had not contacted any of her friends or family. It was further explained that she and her husband, Christopher, had discussed separating from each other early that morning, and that a friend of hers... Uh, had called in a check well-being because Shanann and the two girls had not been heard from or seen that day and that Shanann had not taken any identification, vehicle, money, cell phone, credit cards, children's car seats, etc. So one interesting I, thing I found about was this check well-being. I didn't know that existed. I don't know if that exists in every state, um, but it certainly was a great tactic used by uh, Nikki um, sorry, not Nikki, Nicole, her friend, um, to get the cops to be able to do something active versus just a missing persons, which usually takes time before they'll uh, put that through. So because she was pregnant, but because she had certain uh, medical uh, conditions, she used this tactic of check well-being, uh, which I think was brilliant. I was requested to help search the Wyndham Hill subdivision homes, which are currently under construction in case Shanann and the girls had um, had for some reason sought refuge there. So that was the set of houses behind them that was still under construction. They were searching there. I helped search through numerous, numerous homes which were open and under construction, as well as construction dumpsters in the Wyndham Hill area to try to locate any evidence of the three. I did not observe anything which would indicate Shanann or her daughters were in the area. I was then requested by Sergeant Bakes to enter Shanann, Bella, and Celeste into CCIC and CIC as missing persons with a request to check on their well-being if contacted. At approximately 2 a.m. on Tuesday, August 14th, I contacted Christopher to gather some information that was required on the missing persons report. For example, the girl's height, weight, hair, and eye color, and any scars or marks. When I tried to speak with Christopher 
At that time, I had called the telephone number he provided. Several attempts had been made to call Christopher, but when the number would be connected, there was just dead air. At approximately 2.05, I received the call from Christopher from a different phone number. Christopher told me something had been wrong with his telephone, and he had now been calling me from his work telephone. Interesting. I didn't know that. I explained to Christopher that I needed some information regarding his daughters so they could be entered as being missing, and he advised me of the requested information. He also told me that Shanann had a scar in the middle of her forehead, above the bridge of her nose, which ran in an up, an up and down direction, not side to side. He also told me the scar had been caused by glass from an accident she had been involved in. At that, at, at that it was difficult to see and only became, became visible if she became heated as if she had been in the sun too long. Christopher at that time told me that he still had not heard from his wife and that he could not think of anybody else for us to call to try to help locate her and his daughters. It should be mentioned that once I had made contact with Christopher, he did not ask me if I had been calling because I had any information concerning his mi missing wife and daughters, or if I was calling because they had been found. So that's really interesting. Obviously, if you're a, a spouse who has their, their spouse um, missing and their kids, cop calls he expects you know hey have you found them where are they did, did you did you get any information um and you know obviously the cop picked up on that because uh he didn't ask if he had any information after speaking with christopher i provided the information to weld county dispatch records and shenan bella and celeste were entered as missing persons dispatch faxed over the confirmation information to me and it is included in this report I had also checked with dispatch to see if they could electronically advise any hospitals in the area, making them aware of our CWB missing persons. I was advised that they only, uh, the only way to contact the hospitals would be to call each one individually. At approximately 4.38 a.m., I was contacted directly by, at the PD by Shanann's mother, Sandra. S uh, Sandra was upset and told me that she and her husband believe that her daughter and granddaughter's disappearance involved foul play and that she honestly believes that her son-in-law was involved in the disappearance of her daughter and granddaughter as well. Yep, she knew too. She stated that Christopher is acting weird and out of the ordinary. She said that Christopher is telling people he has to go to work and that just doesn't seem right. She felt that he is going out to pour oil on the bodies to dispose of them somewhere. Wow. And yes, saying you have to go to work after your family's missing obviously doesn't seem right. She was on to something here, though. Picked up on him wanting to go to work if he was going to do something like that to dispose. Unbelievable. Uh, Rusek said that she felt when Shanann had come home late from her trip and had been exhausted and that she and Christopher had argued, but due to Shanann's lupus, she would have not been able to put up a fight. That's sad. I'm sorry. Just had a visual there and <sighs> it's rough. By the way, if any of this is ever hard to listen to, I just ask that, you know, you stop it. Take a break, come back later, or just, you know, don't um don't listen to certain parts. You know, especially as we keep going forward, there's gonna get into a lot of difficult uh, items, autopsies, I don't even know if I'll be able to handle it, but um, I'll do my best. But again, I encourage you, um, if if it's too much of time, skip it, um, go to a different video, or just stop all altogether. I'm not looking to upset anyone or put you through rough, um, <laughs> rough nightmares. Um, so please listen at your own discretion. Uh, Rusek also told me that she had bought Shanann and Apple iWatch, and the ID was her plan number. She said she had purchased it under a T-Mobile plan, but that Shanann had transferred it to her own AT&T account. She identified the iWatch as being a 38 millimeter sil silver alloy, white in color. Rusek then called me back and told me that she and her husband, Frank, had just spoken to Christopher and that he is not shedding a tear about missing family. She did tell me that she told him if he was involved, he would see her become irate. Yeah, sure. Every reason to. 
Rusek finally told me that Christopher had called a neighbor and told them that he feels we are watching him about his involvement in this. Gosh, I didn't even see this before. I explained to Rusek that she should not threaten Christopher or say too much in regards to the direction of this investigation, as we do not know exactly what the circumstances are involving the whereabouts of Shanann and her granddaughters. I recorded my telephone contact with Christopher on my body-worn camera and is available on evidence.com. End of report. So it's, it's very interesting, obviously, as the way the cops, uh, you know, I've come to learn how the cops manage these kinds of situations. Even though they knew he was lying, if you watch the videos, they're very, they play, they play dumb. And it's brilliant. Um, and the point that he makes to um, Shanann's mom is exactly for the, that reason. You don't want to put him on the defensive right away. You don't want to talk too much about what they know, what they think. Um, because he'll think that they're on to him, he'll stop talking, he'll lawyer up, whatever the case. So it's actually best to keep um, the family away from Chris so that they don't, uh, they don't give out too much info about you know, what, what the cops think or anything like that. So, and it's also obviously, um, had they been alive, you know, it's, it's for the purpose of making sure that, that uh, he doesn't do anything uh, to them um, if he if he starts to know that, that he's uh, under scrutiny and that they're you know really making sure that uh, every chance or opportunity to find them alive is is possible so pretty interesting how they work that so for this video we'll stop there at page 24 in Adobe that's discovery page 69 we'll start there um, with the next um, next video so thanks again for watching, and uh, any feedback, please uh, let me know, post in the comments, and uh, please feel free to share with your friends. Um, but again, please, again, listen uh, at your own discretion. All right, this is The Diplomat signing off. I hope you have a great rest of your day.